So today we're going to learn about cells and um, energy made within the cell. Before we get to the cells energy, let's talk about energy on Earth. Energy that powers life is basically the sun, and the sun is what allows life to exist on Earth. So basically all organisms need energy to exist or live. Autotrophs or producers are the organisms that use energy from the sun directly. They take in the sunlight and they make their own food. Organisms that can do this are mainly plants and they do this through a process called photosynthesis. Now after working initially with this unit, if you look at this reaction, if we do this reaction backwards, um, this is photosynthesis by the way, the inverted reaction is actually cellular respiration. You need to know these molecules. So we have carbon dioxide plus water plus light, which is missing from that reaction, gives you glucose plus oxygen. Now if you notice, plants provide you with two of the most important things that you need to survive, which are glucose and oxygen. And these two molecules, glucose and oxygen, are the start of cellular respiration. And that process is the process that explains how cells obtain energy for all cell functions. So, a little quick recap. You start with solar energy and plants convert this solar energy into what we reference as food energy. But food energy is actually chemical energy and that chemical energy is going to be used by the cell. And the cell uses energy for basically all its functions. Grow, repair, transport, just know all cellular functions require energy. So this energy molecule is called ATP. And just like when you learned about carbohydrates, ATP, although we're always going to reference it with these initials, its name describes its chemical composition. So you have adenosine, and adenosine is basically another uh, a name of right here. If we look at this molecule, here's adenine, here's ribose. These two molecules, when they combine, form adenosine. And then you have the triphosphate which is basically three phosphates. So triphosphate meaning three phosphates, as I put here. That's important because those phosphates cause the release of energy. And as I mentioned before, basically ATP, which is the chief energy storing, underline this word, molecule used to run all cell functions. Why storing? Because inside these triphosphate bonds, which is right here. Here's the bond. I'm going to point to it. There is a serious amount of stored energy inside the bonds. When we break the bond of phosphate, so I'll take this bond right here and I'll break it. Basically what's released is energy. As you see here, there's energy in that bond. And then what's left over is ADP. What is ADP? adenosine like right here diphosphate it's no longer tri it's di so d for di and then you have a phosphate left over um so you know atp is needed to make atp so you're always going to ask yourself where did the first atp come from so here's an overview of what i just explained if i give you this diagram we know it's atp because it's made up of adenosine which is the adenine and the ribose right here, adenosine, and a triphosphate bond. So that's where you get the T from, A, T for three phosphates. If I break one of these phosphates bonds right here, inside that bond is a, it's a high energy bond. I'm left over with ADP, which is adenosine right here, adenine and ribose, di meaning two phosphates. I'm also releasing 
um, excessive amounts of energy which are going to be used by the cell and a phosphate remains.